Although the Vigan started development in 1967, it packed in an advanced avionics suite that you wouldn't think possible during that time period. In the area of analog electronics and large circuit board computers that took up the space of a large closet, the Vigan was cutting edge. In the early stages of the Vigan, it was decided that the aircraft would need to have an advanced avionics package to negate the necessity for a second crew. Two-man crewed aircraft were the standard at the time, as it deemed necessary for the amount of work required. It seemed impossible at the time for a single crew to perform all the duties required of a modern strike aircraft. The company responsible for the Vigan, Saab, would struggle to come up with the solution of incorporating a small enough design that could power the Vigan in such a small size. The technology in Sweden at the time would make the advanced system required for the Vigan a large task, and a two-crew design was considered. But by 1960, Saab would reach a breakthrough in computer design, when they designed the CK-37, or Central Calculator Integrated Computer. This breakthrough was aided when U.S. President Eisenhower created an open-door technology agreement with Sweden, giving Saab the ability to work with U.S. technology to create an advanced system. That thou wilt make full and complete our dedication to the service of the people in this throng and their fellow citizens everywhere. The U.S.-based computer company Hewlett-Packard HP, reached out to help develop the powerful central computer that would power the advanced systems plan for the Vigan. With HP assisting Saab, they designed a compact, integrated circuit digital computer that would fit in the aircraft without adding much weight. The computer would be the first integrated computer that would be equipped in an attack aircraft. The system was comprised of a main central data computer that would feed information that was inputted from certain sensors to the cockpit systems. This new computer would reduce the workload to the pilot and allow for a single crewed aircraft. The main computer would run advanced calculations for the autopilot system, gyro instruments, navigation equipment, radar, and radar altimeter. These readings would be displayed on a heads-up display, or HUD, that would instantly display critical information to the pilot such as altitude, attitude, and navigation guidance. HUD seemed commonplace in today's military aircraft, but at the time they were still in development and were only on a select few aircraft. The Vigan's HUD would display navigation waypoints directly on the display and would guide the pilot waypoint to waypoint. The HUD would be utilized in the low-level bombing tactics introduced by the Vigan, giving the pilot visual cues of the terrain and instruct the pilot when to pop up for the attack with the aid of the ground radar equipped. Ground radar on the Vigan was an Ericsson PS-37 X-Band Monopulse radar. This radar would use a sweeping radar dish pointed towards the ground to pick up terrain features and targets at sea. This powerful radar would be used to allow the Vigan to fly blind in either bad weather or night at low altitudes allowing the Vigan to avoid terrain. While the radar could also be pointed upwards to see air targets, it was ill suited to do so and would be replaced later on with a more advanced radar for the interceptor version of the Vigan. To aid in navigation, the Vigan was also equipped with an advanced inertial navigation system, a system that would use a CK-37 computer along with the fine-tuned accelerometers to determine the position of the aircraft. The INS system was the precursor to modern-day GPS. The pilot would input their current latitude and longitude position on the INS display, and the computer detecting the movement of the aircraft would keep track of the position real-time. The system aided pilots to find navigational waypoints as well as target locations. Of course, the system had its drawbacks, including precession and drift that was caused by the rotation of the Earth that would make the system inaccurate. But the Vigan had its procedures to update its current position and cope with these errors. The Vigan also was equipped with the SA-06 Advanced Autopilot System that would help relieve the workload of the pilots on long missions. The system had full control over the aircraft's control surfaces and even integrated an auto-throttle feature to aid in crews and landings. The autopilot incorporated different modes including the altitude hold mode, the attitude hold mode, turn hold that would hold a standard rate turn, and the SPAC mode, a mode similar to modern day fly-by-wire systems that dampened the flight controls and adjusted for aerodynamic drift, allowing the aircraft to remain steady. While the Vigan seems like a retro Cold War fighter, it was well ahead of its time. The Vigan brought innovation that would lead the way for modern day aircraft. Hope you guys enjoyed day 3 of our series here.
Stay tuned for tomorrow when we look at the Viggen weapons and tactics used by the Swedish Air Force.